Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get this smoky, yardy thing in Photoshop. All right, this is the image that we're going to be creating the effect on. And this effect is created with a number of different brushes, specifically brushes that were created from smoke. I have this image here, and I had a number of these different images. I got them from a stock photo site. You don't have to get them from stock photo. You could create them yourself. It's very easy to do. Just get a black background and get an incense stick and have the incense stick lit at the bottom, allow it to waft through the air, and it make it side lit so the light doesn't hit the background, and take a number of different images of the smoke as it changes shape and wafts through the air. Once you have these images, bring them into Photoshop, and we're going to create brushes from them. Now I mentioned I already did it, but I'm gonna show you how to do it on this image. The first thing you wanna do is make it monochrome. To do that on a Mac, it's shift command U on a PC, shift control U. So it's now black and white. We're gonna invert it, command or control I to invert it. So we now have black smoke on a white background. Now I want to increase, increase the contrast a little bit. I'm gonna use levels to do that. It's command or control L to do that. And this far left slider, I'll move it to the right just to make the black smoke a little darker and this Far right slider, just move it a little bit just to make sure that the background is absolutely white. And we'll click OK. Now at this point, you may have some little bits in there that you don't want. In this case, this specific waft of smoke looks fine, but you may have maybe the incense stick in the shot or a little bit of smokes over here that you don't want. If you want to get rid of anything, simply get a brush, hit the B key on your keyboard, get a brush. Make sure you're painting in white, so make sure the white um, swatch is the foreground. In this case, I'll hit the X key to make it that. And then just paint directly on here white, and you'll paint away anything you don't want. Now, I mentioned that this is good the way it is, so we're not going to do much there. Now, what you want to do is just do a selection around the smoke. So we're going to get the rectangular marquee tool, M key on your keyboard. Make sure you're using the rectangular and not the elliptical. And what we're going to do is just go just beyond the smoke a little bit like that and do a selection of the smoke. All right, so we have this rectangular selection around the smoke. Now we're gonna create the brush. We're gonna go up to edit and then down to define brush presets. But this might happen to you. You see how it's grayed out? That's because my image is just too big. So we need to make it smaller. Go up to image, image size, and you only have to do this if it's grayed out and make it smaller. I'm gonna make the height like 4,000. That should be fine. 4,000 pixels and click OK. Now we, lose, we lost our marquee selection. So I'm going to hit Command Plus just to make it a little bigger. We still have that rectangular marquee tool active. So we're gonna go up like this, over like that. So we have this selection. Now what we're going to do is again go up to Edit and down to define brush presets. You can see how that's active now. Do that, give it a name. Now I mentioned I already did this, so I'm gonna just call this my brush. I actually I think called this one brush one, or smoke one, my smoke brush, let's call it, yeah. All right, all right, so we'll do that and click OK. And when, as soon as I click OK, it's gonna open the brush tool with that brush active. And to show it's working, I'll get rid of my selection, hit Command D, I'll fill this with white, to fill it with white, if the white swatch is the foreground swatch, you hold the alt or option key in and hit delete and you'll fill whatever is there in white. If white happened to be the background, I would hold in the command or control key and hit the delete key. Now, uh, just paint in white, so we'll swap them, or paint in black, I'm sorry, swap them, hit the X key, and then you can see there's our smoke. And it works just like a normal brush, use the left bracket key to make it smaller, and the right bracket key to make it bigger. And you could then paint smoke wherever you want smoke. Now we're done really, and you don't, as far as this brush is concerned, so we don't have to save this. So we'll get rid of that, don't save. And we're back to our young lady now. 
So we're gonna go up to the Move tool just to do it. To begin with, we're going to duplicate the background layer. We're gonna hit Command J on my Mac, Control J on a PC. Now I like to do this on a black and white image. This of course is optional. I'm going to convert this to black and white just like we did the smoke. On my Mac, Shift Command U, PC Shift Control U. Now we have the black and white image. Now what I need to do is kind of like elongate the back of her head. So stretch out her hair a little bit. So I'm going to get the um, rectangular marquee tool. The keyboard shortcut is M. Just make sure you're using the rectangular marquee tool and not the elliptical marquee tool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go somewhere uh, just in front of her ear and up a little bit and like that. So I'm just getting the back of her head with this selection. Now what I want to do is go into free transform mode. Hit command or control T on the PC. Then I'll go inside of the selection, right click, and go to warp. Now you'll see that we have a number of handles and we could grab the handles and kind of just stretch out the back of her hair. And you can see how it's not affecting her face at all when I do this. Once I have this stretch back, you also could just go inside and grab in there as well and stretch it out. So we'll stretch her hair out like, like that. And when I'm happy with it, I'll just hit the little check mark at the top to commit it and it's done. Now we'll get rid of that selection, hit Command or Control D. Now we need to put a layer on top of this layer. It's a blank layer. We'll go to the far right hand side, click on that little plus sign. We need to fill this with white. Now the easiest way to do that is look over at your swatches. If you don't have black and white here, hit the D key on your keyboard. That will give you D for default, the default colors. Now because white is the background swatch, hold the control or command key in and hit the delete key and you'll fill it with white. Now if white happened to be the foreground swatch, hold the alt or option key in and hit the delete key and you'll fill it with the foreground color. Now. We have that there, of course it's obscuring our lady. So what we need to do is put a mask on it. So we're just going to go down here and click on the little mask icon. So we have a mask there now. Now this is where our smoke brushes come in. We're gonna paint in black with our smoke brushes and kind of bring her back to life. Now to do that, we'll get a brush, hit the B key on your keyboard to get the brush tool. And I'm going to get one of my smoke brushes. We'll go over here and go down to my smoke brushes. And there's one I wanna start with, I think it's number five. Nope, yeah, number five, number six. Yeah, this one. Um, you can see how it has that flat side on the left. That just, I think, helps me find her face a little more. So I wanna click like right there and kind of find her face like that. Now one thing is see opacity is only at 22%. I should turn that all the way up to 100%. So I'm going to undo those two brush strokes I just did by hitting Command Z on my Mac, Control Z on your PC. So you want to paint with an opacity of 100%. And I should have checked that, but I didn't. So we'll do this, this, and maybe down here like this. So we're kind of starting our painting process. Now what I found is the less brushes you could use the better at least in my opinion of course everyone's different and um you know don't use the same brush too often now i did like four clicks with this brush let's do a different one so we'll go up here and we'll try a different one like that one's too little um all right let's try this one I'll go like right there i didn't like that i'm hit if you don't like something just hit command or control z to undo it so we're gonna be kind of fussy. Whoops, that's the one I keep clicking on. All right, how's this? All right, that's better, that's better. Come in like that. And then, oops, we'll get another different brush. How's that one? All right, now what we could do is we could rotate the brush with this little circle, but I kind of like to leave that in its default position. What I prefer to do is rotate the entire canvas. Now to do that, hold the R key in, and when you do that, you get a little hand tool, and you could rotate the canvas. And I'm gonna get it smaller by hitting Command or Control minus on my keyboard. So you get a little smaller, and you could kind of do this, get a different brush here, like that. Hold that R key in again, straighten it out, hit Command zero to kind of get a look at it, 
and I kind of like where it is right there. Like I mentioned, I prefer not to do a lot of different uh, brush strokes myself, but her face for me isn't well defined enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my brushes and I'm going to get a soft round brush, just a regular soft round brush. Now for this brush, it's a humongous brush. Let's get a little smaller one by hitting the left bracket key. For this one, I'm going to bring opacity down to somewhere around like 15, 20% in there somewhere. And then what I'll do is I could come in here and bring out her face and body a little more. Like that. So, yeah, you get the idea. And you could come in and do some different brush strokes in here. I could go back up to the brushes. Remember, I had a really small uh, brush. I think it was maybe this one. No, this one. Yeah, that one have that really small brush. On this one I could change the angle, let's say to something like that. And then I could come in here and fill in some blanks. Now on this I need to put opacity back up to 100% and come in here and do that, I don't know, like that. And kind of fill in a little bit if I, I'd like to, I mean, like I said, if you'd start doing it a little bit too much, to me, it doesn't look as good. But you get the idea. So. That is it. That's how you get this kind of smoky, flowing, arty hair look in Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.